All right, let's uh, head to South Africa, Cape Town, where to the funeral procession of Mamali Desmond Tutu, Tutu is currently Mamali. ongoing. This is President Cyril Ramaphosa speaking and right after now. After that visit, some journalists were standing outside and they asked me, will the Archbishop be given a Category 1 funeral? I said, of course, it will be a category one funeral. But then I added, with religious characteristics. And may I say that today, you may well have written another chapter in government orders and processes of what a category one funeral with religious characteristics is. And thank you very much. I've just seen it for myself. If Archbishop Desmond Tutu were here, he would have said, hey, hey, why are you looking so glum, so unhappy? He would have wanted to elicit a smile, a laughter from amongst all of us. That was the type of person that he was. I'm really delighted that Government has been led in this whole process by the church. We had, after the passing of Madiba, envisaged that this moment would come. And for well, for well over six years, a file in government has been building up and we've been discussing how are we going to send Archbishop Tutu on to the next world? And we took a view that we would be led by the church. And I'm rather pleased that government has taken a back seat this time round. It is only a few amongst us, the rarest of souls, who attain the stature of global icon during their lifetime. In our modern age, this term has come to be associated with celebrity and social media fame. Yet if we are to understand a global icon to be someone of great moral stature, of exceptional qualities, and of service to humanity, there can be no doubt that it refers to the man we are laying to rest today. Archbishop Desmond Tutu was without question a crusader in the struggle for freedom, for justice, for equality, and for peace, not only in South Africa, the country of his birth, but around the world as well. Such was the overarching impact and influence that Emeritus Archbishop Desmond Tutu had that tributes have been received as we had from current, past presidents, religious leaders, monarchs, lawmakers, political parties, musicians, artists, and ordinary people from all corners of the world. Climate activists, LGBTQI plus groups, solidarity movements and community organizations are just some of those who have paid homage to a man who gave his life to the cause of freedom. A humble, and brave human being who spoke for the oppressed, the downtrodden, and the suffering of the world. In doing so, he walked in the footsteps of his mentor, Father Trevor Huddleston, one of the many heroic champions of freedom in our country and on our continent. 
How fitting is it that his parents named him Mpilo when he was born, meaning life. In his life, he enriched the lives of all those that he met and all those who got to know him. Over the past week, we have had many moving accounts and we have also seen many images of Desmond Tutu's life. These accounts and images in many ways are a chronicle of a life of activism, statesmanship, ministry and pastoralism. There is one image taken in 1989 at a protest march here in Cape Town. In the black and white photograph, we see Archbishop Desmond Tutu and the late Professor Jake Scherwell alongside him, glaring defiantly at a cordon of police who were armed to the teeth just inches away. Their mission, that is the police, was to stop the march from proceeding. It is a striking photograph that captures the steely determination of the arch to challenge the authority of an unjust, illegitimate, and repressive regime. It was a vivid depiction of the confrontation between right, represented by those who were marching for democracy, and might represented by the men in the uniform of the apartheid police. Well, President Cyril Ramaphosa has delivered his tribute and eulogy to the late, late Archbishop Desmond Tutu, who is, who is or will be buried today in Cape Town. Tutu has been regarded as a hero of the struggle against apartheid in South Africa. The funeral procession is being held in St. George's Cathedral, Cape Town, where for years he preached against racial injustice. Tutu was awarded the Nobel Peace Prize in 1984 for his non-violent opposition to white minority rule. His death on Sunday, aged 90, triggered an outpouring of tributes from around the world. We On is now available in your country. Download the app now and get all the news on the move.